microscopic Milton is very small indeed. He lives in a clock on the mantelpiece in the parlour of a house that belongs to a lady named Mrs. Witherspoon. No one knows he's there, apart from Milton's friend Douglas, who spends most of his time asleep in front of the fire, and, of course, you. Microscopic Milton and his best friend Douglas were playing in the snow. It was quite deep and came right up to Douglas's knees. When Milton stepped onto it, he disappeared completely. Suddenly, Mrs. Witherspoon appeared and Milton kept out of sight. She had just baked yet another batch of mince pies. I'm not sure that I've made enough, she said. You just don't know when someone may call in for a cup of tea. And off she went to buy flour and sugar so that she could make even more. Keep an eye on things, Douglas, she called, and when I get back, one of those pies will be yours. Douglas loved mince pies. L let's find, find somewhere to play where the snow's not so thick, shivered Milton. What's that strange noise, said Milton? It's coming from that hole in the oak tree. Douglas lifted Milton up to the hole, and as he peered inside, he saw two very cold squirrels. Oh, you poor things, he said. Go into the house and sit by the fire. Oh, and, and help yourself to mince pies. Mrs. Witherspoon baked them just in case anyone called round. Douglas wasn't entirely sure that that was what she'd meant, but the squirrels looked so pleased that he didn't argue. The delicious smell of hot mince pies drifted out from the kitchen. All over the garden, birds and animals were peeping out from their hiding places and sniffing the air. They all looked so cold and hungry, thought Milton. And before Douglas could stop him, he'd invited every last one of them into the house. It began to snow again, and a snowflake landed right on top of Milton's head. Ooh, he said. Let's go inside where it's warm. When Milton and Douglas opened the parlour door, they couldn't believe their eyes. Their room was completely full of animals and birds of all shapes and sizes, and they all looked very happy indeed now that they were warm and full of Mrs. Witherspoon's delicious mince pies. Milton was very pleased with himself, but Douglas was beginning to get rather worried. The house was full of wildlife, and all the mince pies were gone. Oh, no! thought Douglas. Milton and Douglas quickly rounded up the animals and led them into the garden. The squirrels hopped back into their hole in the oak tree just as Mrs. Witherspoon opened the garden gate. I've just seen two squirrels, she said to Douglas as she came into the kitchen. You don't usually see much wildlife at this time of year. <laughs> you should have been here two minutes ago, thought Douglas. Mrs. Witherspoon put down her shopping. Now, Douglas, she said, I promised you a mince pie, didn't I? To her surprise, they were all gone. Not even a single crumb was left. Well, she said, it looks as if you've had more than your fair share already, you greedy dog. But I haven't even had one, thought Douglas miserably as he went back into the parlour. Never mind, said Milton, I saved one for you. Milton pushed the mince pie over the edge of the mantelpiece and Douglas gobbled it up in a flash. I saved it from last Christmas, added Milton. I never have liked mince pies. Douglas didn't seem to mind and stretched out in front of the fire for another nap. Roll on spring, he thought. Oh, <laughs> my